there and welcome to the first of three videos in a series looking at the sorting algorithms needed for this exam board. There are a number of key things that we need to look at when addressing sorting algorithms. The first is what they are and how they work from a theoretical stance. The second is to be able to dry run them given data. The third is how to pseudocode them and the fourth is the best and worst case scenario of each sorting algorithm. So the three that we're going to look at is the bubble sort, the insertion sort, and the quick sort. So we're going to jump straight in, in this video, to the bubble sort. The bubble sort is a very simple algorithm, and it revolves around two loops. The outer loop controls the passes, and the inner loop controls the swaps made in the array. A list is referred to as n in its size, because we're not sure how big or small it is. And it will always run n minus 1 times, because if you had an array of one element, then you can say that that's already sorted. The bubble sort has the job of moving the largest or smallest values in the list to the end of the list one after another. After the first pass, the largest element or the smallest element will always be at one end. And this is the notion of the biggest or smallest numbers bubbling up to the top of the list. And finally, in order for the algorithm to say it's sorted, a final pass is made, and if no swaps are done on that pass, then we can say that the array is sorted. So let's see this in action. We're going to look at the first element here, which is 6, and we're going to have an ascending list. So 6 is compared to 2, 6 is greater than 2, so we make a swap. 6 is then compared with 3, 6 is greater than 3, so we make a swap. 6 is compared with 5. 6 is greater than 5, so we make another swap. 6 is greater than 1, so we make another swap here. And then 6 is greater than 4, so we make another swap. Now this is the first pass, and you'll see that 6 has bubbled its way up to the top of the list. Now we go back to the start and run the same algorithm again. 2 is compared to 3, it's not greater than 3, so we move along and check 3 against 5, it's not greater than 5. So then 5 is then compared with 1, and we make a swap. 5 is compared with 4, and we make a swap. 5 is now in its rightful place. So then we start again. 2 is compared with 3, it's not greater than 3. 3 is compared with 1, it's greater than 1, so we make a swap. Then 3 is compared with 4, it's not greater than it, so 4 is in its rightful place. 2 is compared with 1, and we make a swap, because 2 is greater than 1. 2 is compared with 3, and there's no swap made there. We go back to the start, and we run the final pass, and we check to see if 1 is greater than 2. There's no swap made there. 1 is on its own, so that means we made a pass and no swaps were made. The list is now sorted. The next thing to do is to look at an example of the bubble sort algorithm in pseudocode. This is from an exam paper, so we're going to dry run it to show you the process that repeats itself in the bubble sort. So I have a procedure called sort my array. I have a couple of variables, n, I have temp, and I have swapped. So n and temp are both numbers, integers, and then we've got swapped is a boolean, which is true or false. We set n to the length of my array. So I've got six elements in my array, so I simply set n to equal the value of 6. Then I've got a repeat until swapped equals false. So I go into my repeat loop and the first thing I see is set swapped equals false. So I set my swap variable to equal false. And then I've got a for loop that runs for i equals 0 to n minus 1. So from 0 to 5 number of times this loop will iterate. Inside the for loop I've got an if statement if my array at the position of i is less than my array at i plus 1. Now this less than symbol is very important. If that symbol is less than, then I know that my list is going to be in descending order. If it's greater than, then I know my list will be in ascending order once it has been sorted. Very important to keep your eye on that. So let's evaluate the if statement. If my array at position i, which is 0, so I'm saying if 6, is less than my array at position of i plus 1, which is 2. If 6 is less than 2, then make a swap. Now, 6 is not less than 2. So we fail that condition. 
which then increments i from 0 to 1. And then we try the if statement again. This time we're saying if my array at the position of i, which is now 1, so that's saying is 2, is less than i plus 1, which is 3, then make a swap. So 2 is less than 3. So then we go inside the if statement and we say temp is assigned the value of my array at i plus 1. i is 1, so i plus 1 is going to be 2. So the value of 3 is put into temp. Then the next line says my array at i plus 1 is given the value of my array at i. So 3 is overwritten with the value of 2. And then my array at the position of i is given the value of temp. So 3 is put into position 1 in my array. And we've made a swap there. So we set the swapped Boolean value to equals true. Then we hit end if, and then we hit end for. So we increment i to 2. So now we head back up and reevaluate the if statement. And it says now if my array position i, well, i is now 2. So is 2 less than my array at i plus 1, which is 5? 2 is less than 5. So 5 is put into the temp variable, i plus 1 is given the value of my array at i, so 2 is placed into position 3, my array at i is given the value of temp, so 5 is placed into position 2, and we've made another swap. So we set swapped to equal true. End the if, end the for, increment i to 3, and then we run the if statement again. If my array at the position of i i is now 3, so the value at index 3 in my array is 2. So is 2 less than my array at i plus 1, which is the value of 1? 2 is not less than 1, so it actually fails the if statement there. So we skip over and we increment i to number 4. Then we go to the if statement again and say if my array at the position of i is less than my array i plus 1. So that's saying if number 1 in my array is less than number 4 in my array, then make a swap. I assign number 4 into my temporary variable in my array at i plus 1. I put in in my array at the position of i plus 1, I assign the value that's in my array at position i. So 1 overwrites the number 4. And then number 4 that's held in my temporary variable is assigned into my array at position i, so that overwrites the number 1. And then I assign the variable swapped to equal true, which it already is anyway. Once I've done that, I'll increment i to the value of 5. Now that i equals 5, when we interpret the for loop, we've reached the end of the for loop itself. And if you look at the array, you can see that the smallest element in this case has bubbled up to the top after the first pass. So now we know what to do in a pass, the next pass is just replicating the exact same process. In order to stop this algorithm, we have to make a pass with no swaps. So for the purpose of speed and this video, I'm going to show you the steps that we take, but in a much faster pace. So in the next pass, I'd compare 6 and 3. 6 is not less than 3, so I just move along and look at 3 and 5. 3 is less than 5, so I copy 5 into a temporary variable. I copy 3 over to my array plus 1, which overwrites 5. And then I put whatever was in the temp, which is now 5, back into position 1. Once I've made the swap, I look at 3 and 2. 3 is not less than 2. So I just focus on 2 and then 4. 2 is less than 4, so again, I put 4 in a temporary variable. I copy 2 across to overwrite 4, and then I put 4 in the temporary variable back where 2 was before, and therefore making a swap. 1 is already in its rightful place, so the job now is to start again. 6 and 5, no swap being made. 5 and 3, no swap being made. 3 and 4, 3 is less than 4, so I need to copy 4 over into a temporary variable, put 3 to overwrite 4, and then put 4 back where 3 was before. And then I've made a swap. Then I'd compare and look at 3 and 2. 2 is in its rightful place. 
I start the algorithm again. I look at six and five, again, no change there. I look at five and four, no change there. I look at four and three, no change there. Two's already at its rightful place, so is three. So I'm gonna stop there. On this pass, no swaps were made, so I can say that the array is sorted. And that's all the bubble sort is. The last thing that we need to look at now is the best case and worst case scenario of this bubble sort running. Best case occurs when all the elements in your array are already in a sorted order. So you do one pass and no swaps are made and the array is already sorted. That is the fastest way the bubble sort will run. The worst case scenario is when the elements are in the reverse order that we actually want. So if you want an ascending list, all the numbers are in descending order, you're going to have to make the most swaps and comparisons in the algorithm. And that's the worst case scenario. So there we have it. That was a very quick look at the bubble sort algorithm. Remember, there's two more to cover. We've got the insertion sort and the quick sort in my other videos. See you again.